Well, hello and welcome, everyone. Good morning. It is a nice and bright Wednesday morning, 8th of April, 2020, approximately 11 a.m. It is day three of Redmi Creator Academy, uh, Redmi's unique, unique masterclass series where we are spending this entire week uh, to make amazing content creators and YouTubers out of all of you. My name is Ankit Vengurlekar. I'm going to be moderating this session. I also lead PR and corporate communication and community at Xiaomi India. And uh, I have also been accused of speaking a lot. I'm a certified chatterbox. Uh, so apologies for that in advance. In fact, today's whole panel, hai, uh, these are some of the biggest chatterboxes in the country. And they literally make a living out of talking. So uh, it's going to be a tough one to moderate. Um, well, let me introduce uh, the panel that we've got today and absolutely power pack star studded uh, panel here all masters of video production and the visual medium uh, starting with the lady mega vishwanath uh, she's the host of tech toys uh, startup show young turks on cnbc tv18 uh, which is a business channel and uh, mega how long have you been in tech journalism now how long have you been making video content um, well, I've been a journalist for eight years, and this is pretty much the only thing I know how to do. Uh, so yes, it's been eight long years. Uh, we've literally seen the evolution of uh, content moving from television uh, to content evolving on digital, and all of us have been doing that. So yeah, eight years it is. And you very yes. rightly pointed out, Ankit, uh, I'm just wondering how you're going to be moderating this session, considering you are the biggest chatterbox uh, that we all know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you. Very, very kind words coming in there from Megha. Thanks so much. <laughs> Megha is uh, actually not being very kind to her own description because apart from being an amazing journalist for eight years, if you quickly hover over to her Instagram after this YouTube live, of course, you will realize she's a very, very gifted singer. She plays the guitar and the ukulele as well. So uh, there are a lot of hidden talents there. So um, over to uh, the next one, Bharat Nakpal. Uh, he is the one in blue t-shirt with these ginormous headphones on his head. Uh, and Bharat is the founder of iGyan Network. And uh, it's a million plus subscriber base of uh, YouTube. Uh, it's also a website. Uh, Bharat, why don't you tell us how old iGyan is and how long you've been making videos? Um, hi, everyone. It's been about 10 years. It's going to be 10 years in June. So it's been 10 years uh, when I started iGyan. Um, and that's how long I've been handling the website as well as making videos. That's amazing. Amazing. He's also being extremely modest. Uh, the reason we have Bharat and of course, uh, Sandeep and Megha here is because these are some of the best visual storytellers in India. They are masters of their craft. They're absolute masters of the visual medium. They know how to work magic with their cameras. They know how to work magic on the edit and storytelling, uh, which is why we have all of these people here. And last but definitely not the least is uh, Sandeep Sarma, who also keeps getting trolled a lot on Twitter as Manukumar Jain lookalike uh, and the more YouTube savvy Manukumar Jain <laughs> and KJ. Uh, Sandeep, thank you so much for joining uh, and you know uh, being here on this masterclass. Talk to us about how old Rev Atlas, your YouTube channel is. How many years have you been creating visual content? Okay, so Rev Atlas is around three years now. Uh, and I have been creating videos, well, aside from one failed attempt to recreate Dawn, you know, as a movie, as a fan, fan version of that movie in 2005. I think 2010 was the first time I started making videos, especially on smartphones. So almost 10 years, like uh, Bharat as well. And uh, yeah, it's been a great journey so far. Thank you for having me on today. That's awesome. I cannot believe how well disciplined this panel is. I've known each of these uh, people here for years now, and uh, we're great friends even off the camera. Uh, and it's going to be an absolutely amazing, jam packed, super, super knowledge rich session. Uh, this is a YouTube live, which means feel free to write your comments or questions right here in the YouTube chat. Please keep it respectful. Um, and uh, we promise to try and address as many questions as we can. Uh, through the course of this. Uh, but before that, let's dive straight into the content. Redmi Creator Academy, where we are talking about 
uh, video production masterclass today. Um, and that's really the meat of all video content production, right? Um, that's the panel, like I said, Bharat Nakhpal of IGYAN, Mega Vishwanath of CNBC TV18, and Sandeep Sarma of Rev Atlas. Extremely good looking panel right here. Okay, so there are three stages of any YouTube video production. Um, this is probably the only part that I'm going to uh, help launch into. And then we're going to go over to each of these uh, masters who are going to help us understand each of these three stages. First up is pre-production. What is pre-production? Megha will help us understand and everything that entails. Production, not food production, but video production here today, even though I'm really hungry. And of course, post-production, which is all the magic that happens on the edit table. Okay, so... Right off to you, Megha. I guess it's time for me to unmute uh, myself and for you to unmute yourself. And uh, there's a lot of content and ground to cover here on pre-production. Over to you. Okay. So, um, yes, as you said, uh, that you've broken it down into pre-production, production, and post-production. That is pretty much how any video is made. It's not just for YouTube. And it's actually a good practice for everyone to follow, uh, no matter what content you're creating. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, that I think of we're on a different slide, uh, Ankit. You want to switch back? All Sorry, right, butter there. fingers. So we are on the on the pre-production uh, slide right here, and uh, as you can see, everything that uh, is is listed here, every subtopic has the word prep, uh, which according to me is the most important thing, no matter what you're doing. Preparation is the key uh, for absolutely anything that you're willing to produce, um, be it an interview, be it a video that you're shooting, be it with um, just your own self recording and explainer. There are different types. And uh, I would also, uh, you know, want to request at some point like Bharat and Sandeep to also jump in on the pre-production piece here because I, of course, uh, have most of my experience coming in from television. And as I said right at the beginning, a lot of this has now changed uh, over the course of a few years. Um, a lot of our content that you see on television programs, that you see on bulletins, is just repurposed uh, for Instagram. It's repurposed differently for Facebook. It's repurposed differently for Twitter. And of course, it's repurposed completely differently uh, for YouTube. So let's jump in straight to one of the first things uh, that is mentioned right here, which is the location prep. So pre-production essentially involves A, of course, deciding on what you want to shoot and what is the story that you want to tell. Is it uh, you sitting in front of a camera going and talking about a topic and explaining it, which is called an explainer? Or is it you picking up a device uh, and reviewing one of the gadgets, which is something that all of us do at this point here? or uh, are you looking to interview a guest? If you're looking to interview a guest, then that requires a different type of uh, preparation and you have to choose a location accordingly. So those are just some groundwork. We also call it recce. Uh, in the old days, we had the luxury of doing really long format recce. And Ankit, uh, who's, who's my senior at, at work and senior at Tech Toys, uh, would, would guarantee that Ankit, uh, let me ask you, how long uh, did you guys take to recce a location back then? You know, the good old days when we actually had the time, a recce is actually doing a reconnaissance of sorts of a location or of the guest or of the subject that you're going to be shooting. And it's amazing because it really makes a difference in all kinds of shoots, right? Uh, feature films yeah. are still among the last form of art form, I believe, visual art forms that still do extensive recce. And you're absolutely right, Mega. Yeah. Uh, we would, if, if, for example, we have to shoot on a Friday, either on a Monday and a Tuesday, we would go and do an entire location recce along with our DOP, the you know main photographer or cinematographer, and they would see the light placement, yeah. they would see the set placement, where the chairs are going to be, how the light's going to fall, uh, and then you would go and produce uh, a luxury which I don't think any of right. us can can afford right now. Not anymore, not anymore, and especially for television where uh, things are working by the minute, you might not know what story you're going to be working on in the evening, there's some completely different plan in the morning and everything changes. But however, especially because we're talking about YouTube production, a lot of the YouTube players, especially uh, folks like Bharat, have kind of changed the game. 
uh, and uh, you know essentially they decided to get rid of that entire process have one set which is why a lot of youtube bloggers or bloggers who you would see online would be doing their entire video shoots from one location unless of course they are going out uh, and shooting a device uh, for which they will have to go into different locations and yes sorry was someone bharat were you saying something sorry okay all right i just thought i heard heard you right there so yes so that is one of the top things that you have to decide decide on a location based on the story uh, that you need to do now how do you decide on a location of course it needs to be a good looking spot but it's not always about uh, having a beautiful frame it's about having a relevant frame so uh, if i can bring in some news gyan here if you are for instance uh, talking about what's happening at the dalal street if you're talking about what's happening at uh, the government then you would obviously want a you know a, a, a relevant background in the frame if you're talking about delhi like the most cliche thing to do is probably go to india gate and shoot that or if you're talking about bombay then there is some story that you would want to shoot at the marine drive but again that is just one part of the story you have to put some thought into why you are standing or sitting in a certain place and talking about it apart from just having a visual treat around it and uh, the second part of course is the preparation i kind of lost the slide right there but no problem i have yes okay the second thing we're talking about the style prep which is something that i've already addressed you have to think about what video are you shooting what is it that you are wanting to do is it the interview and of course you have to prep for that accordingly script is one of the most important uh, is one of the most important things according to me i am a broadcast journalist we do not begin any any story without a script in place even if it means having a rough script in your mind you have to put that out now what does a script mean a script is essentially a breakdown of your video everything that you're shooting all your ideas just put it down on a piece of paper or type it out and that's when you would know at what your story is looking like it literally means what is your introduction so even if it's a line which says hello and welcome to my youtube channel write it down be prepared do not be fumbling and and you know trying to find words because trust me uh, sometimes when you're in front of the camera it's very possible that you might be messing up your own name that happened true story and it is going to happen to you as well if you're a new content creator because camera does make all of us a little nervous so uh, just we will have to be careful about being prepared in terms of your script once you write your script down once you write that what you want to talk or what you want to say that's when you have to start shooting accordingly which is production which of course bharat's going to be talking about um next and not everyone follows this process it's just my way of doing it even um, that does not mean that we don't do impromptu stuff uh, live television is all about impromptu stuff but it's always good to have a rough structure in your mind so that you know the flow of your video and you're moving from one thing to the other Of course, if you're Mega, I have a question. Video, you have with the luxury. respect to the yes. script. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, so on day one, actually, we did a session on creative writing and scripting. Um, yes. And yesterday also, uh, you know, we had uh, Kanish Khanna, who's lead of YouTube partnerships uh, in India. And of course, scripting is mm. a very, very critical part of creating content. Uh, but my question is, especially for all those freshers who may be starting out, when you write a script. more often than not mm. you end up reading it like a script as mm. if you're reading an article or you're yeah. reading lines of yeah. words um and most of mm. the most good creators on youtube like sandeep like bharat like yourself um are very conversational in nature but when you're reading a piece of paper or lines of words of it you don't sound conversational you sound like you're reading a speech uh, so how do you pivot right. from reading something off a script and yet sounding conversation is there a tip or a trick that you've got for people there i just think it's one word for that which is confidence uh for you to get into a space where you're confident enough for you to deliver your your piece and and trust me i i won't shy away from doing this you pick up any old video uh and and i do this a lot i try and pick up an old video like say 7 years back that i did one of the first few videos that i ever did 
which went and you know which came on air my voice sounds different my body language is different of course i look very different which is another thing but yes that is something that you realize that you know when you are on camera you somehow feel that you need to be whatever version you think is the perfect version in your head but what actually ends up happening is that that's nowhere close to who you truly are so it's a total cliche but honestly youtube videos and and why certain people become more popular than the others is purely authenticity you have to bring out an element of yourself everyone is going to say the same thing about a redmi phone right this much megapixel this much camera this screen size everyone's going to say how awesome it is for... all right all right you said it uh, but but the point is that exactly if you are reading out a specification of a phone everyone's going to say the same thing out so i would actually recommend an exercise which i used to do is that i would watch every youtube uh, blogger every every channel out there just to see their style and you would see that how the same content can be delivered in different styles and you know what you have to find your own you will find yourself enacting or or reenacting or or kind of like you know in a way you will have a hint of some one that you've looked up to some one that you've always been inspired by you are going to pick up that style but along the way the more you keep doing this the more you keep building on content and which is why i said writing is so important and scripting is so important because you will find your own way to say the same thing it will be your language it will be the way you're going to talk also having said that just because you're on youtube does not mean you're sitting in your drawing room the way you chat with your friends is not the same way you're going to be delivering the content you are going to sound slightly more polished than who you truly are and that's okay and if anything that's how you have to be you have to come across as someone who's presentable and not jarring because i know all of us kind of let go when we are with our own people and we're like oh that's my authentic self no no not that much authenticity you have to kind of brush up on your skills you have to work on your delivery you have to sound cool but at the same time you have to be presentable so that is one thing that i think comes with practice the more you script the more you write it out you're going to find your own writing style even if it means that you're someone who's very serious or you're someone who's tongue in cheek or you're someone who kind of finds like you know their own way of adding humor which is something that you do right like in between your delivery there are always these puns and jokes and it's not always thought out it's just impromptu but that's just your style and that's what you have to stay true to so i think scripting is a process that you have to keep doing practice in front of a mirror a million times delivery all of this is part of pre production by the way and i'm giving you like all the uh, you know things that i have done and uh, it really really helps it's only when you see yourself uh, and and if you are able to tolerate yourself then that is when you should hit the record button on that camera and make sure you are able to put yourself out there until is the that, time you're not able to yeah. deal with your own self don't go out there is my recommendation no uh, these are fantastic point. fantastic tips uh, and and you know inputs there i actually want to go over to the youtubers uh, bharat nagpal sandeep yes. sharma both of you um, you had never done anything on camera before before you started youtubing uh, so bharat if you can rewind back 10 years sandeep if you can rewind back 7 8 years and talk to us about how you built that confidence uh what was your process did you write words on a piece of paper were you reading a particular script um what was your process and um now when you look back at your videos of 8 10 years ago how much do you squirm in your chair uh talk to us about that bharat you first so uh, i think the whole concept of scripting was never something that uh, ever related to me and honestly in the beginning we didn't even know that there was something called scripting it was always uh, very uh simplistic in terms of how it was lined out for us and there was just a very organic way of saying things for us and especially for me when i was talking about a particular device it was more about what my personal feelings were for it so it didn't have a lot of preparation involved and giving a review from that perspective is what actually gives you the authentic authenticity of a review because if you can write something down 
the only thing that we or I ever wrote down was pointers. So we would write down things that we would want to talk about, say build quality, design, and whatever. So just to have like a flow of the video is why we would have this so-called script, but it would be more like a flow. And then based on those pointers, we would just talk about whatever uh, we were talking about. And um, what she said about confidence is right. If you do have confidence, um, you can give out what you want to say without hesitation and without thinking about it too much. But if you don't have the confidence, uh, then you'll struggle with it a little bit. You can't really generate confidence. It comes with time. And um, the more you practice, the more you speak, the more you record yourself, uh, you get better with it. And then eventually you're at a point where you're just, you don't care if the camera's in front of you. Which is what the stage is where you are at, where Meg has at, where Sandeep is at right now. It's taken eight or 10 years. Uh, I know you have said that many people are writing comments here. Please, please, Hindi. We will try to keep it in Hindi. We will switch it to Hindi in Hindi English. Mein switch karte um, so, Megha, Bharat, Sandeep, as and when you feel comfortable, please Hindi mein bhi share it in Hindi. Thank you to all of you who are joining. I'm going to keep reminding and keep recapping for everyone. Uh, Redmi Creator Academy ka ye tisara din hai. We are doing a masterclass in video production today. Filhal hum baat kar rahe hain pre-production ki, uh, just mein Megha Vishwanath of CNBC TV 18 is taking us through some of the big pointers. Also joining our Bharat Nakpal, founder of iGyan and Sandeep uh, Sarma of Rev Atlas. Please ja ke inke sab ke channels ko subscribe ki jayega. Ghanti dawaiyega ta ki nai videos aayenge to aapko pata chal jayega. I feel like I'm just doing a YouTube video myself. But Sandeep, uh, talk to us about do you use scripting as a process uh, or aapka kya flow hota hai? So I think it's it's a constant process of evolving from one method to the other. So I started off writing articles. And the first uh, sort of roadblock that I stumbled across is when I was writing a script for the first few videos that I made, I was writing it in the same way that I was writing a review. And this is something that Arshad also spoke about two days ago on the first episode. So that doesn't work. You can't exactly deliver it the same way that you would in a text article, you have to change it to the way that you speak, use simpler language, use uh, words that are more easily understandable or things that you can easily speak, even if you don't have a script. So you start off with the script and in case you don't feel confident enough, you can always go for voiceover by doing, you know, just minimal A roll with you in front of the camera and talking about it and then doing voiceover bits in between. And then as you build confidence, you can slowly add more of A roll to it and eventually what happens is the script goes down to pointers and at the end you might not even need a pointer as well so it becomes completely uh, you know with the flow or you just wing it totally okay all right thanks so much for that megha i'm going to uh, give it back to you and i'm going to share the screen so yes. we can start seeing the presentation again uh, and just the pointers one quick thing i want to add here uh, Yes, the one quick thing I wanted to add here is, is what Bharat said that, you know, it was pointers or what Sandeep said that he was used to writing long format reviews and he realized that a lot of his videos still sound like an article. That's something that you learn with time. But uh, the reason why scripting sometimes can become important and that does not mean, by the way, writing every single word. It could just be pointers as well. It could be a brief framework. A script is just your structure. But why we need a script in a lot of places is, for instance, YouTube makers or YouTube creators started with the luxury of having unlimited time on hand, right? A YouTube can have a 20 minute video. That is a full half hour show on television. A script essentially helps you make sure that your video is of a certain time because now that we are creating content for different platforms, for instance, an average Twitter video is about two minutes, 20 seconds. An Instagram video, not an IGTV video, but a, just one post on Instagram is about a minute long. So even if you're making a trailer or a promo, it just helps you kind of work on your time. And as we said, there are no rules for scripts. You can write full sentences, you can write pointers, or you can simply have your structure, just break what your video is going to look like uh, down on paper or in your head, depending on where you are on your experience levels. Because it's such a thing that will come with time. You will make a lot of videos, you will make a lot of work, you will get a lot of experience with that. And you don't even need to make a video. Pick up a video. You pick up a video. And you think about what could happen in that script. 
दैट्स वन एक्सरसाइज दैट एवरीवन कैन डू जो लोग नए शुरू कर रहे हैं वीडियो बनाना कोई भी वीडियो उठाइए और उसको लिखो उन्होंने कैसे लिखा है अभी एंड uh, जो है प्रेजेंटर वो आया तो उसने ये चीज बोली अब विजुअल्स आए विजुअल्स के नीचे ये चीज आई उसको वॉइस ओवर बोलते हैं जो विजुअल के ऊपर आप वॉइस सुनते हैं उसको वॉइस ओवर बोलते हैं तो आपने पीटीसी लिखा वॉइस ओवर लिखा ब्रेक इट डाउन देखिए अलग अलग लोग आपके फेवरेट यूट्यूबर्स कैसे वीडियो बनाते हैं आप जब उसको पेपर पे ब्रेक डाउन करोगे मच बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हाउ दैट होल पीस केम टूगेदर अनादर थिंग दैट आई मूव ऑन ऑन द प्रेजेंटेशन पर्सनल क्रेप ऑफ कॉर्स आई टोल्ड यू मल्टीपल टिप practice in front of the mirror speak out loud read things out loud read books out loud read articles out loud work on your voice modulation all of those things is something that you have to do and like i said uh, whether you like it or not you have to groom yourself aap camera ke samne ho and i'm sure ye log ab selfie khinchne ke liye itne taiyar ho jate hain to video banane ke liye to ho hi jayenge but fir bhi work on yourself be your you know best presentable self and your authentic self at the same time you don't have to be done up uh, but yeah just just try and put yourself out there because at the end of the day youtube ya koi bhi jagah pe no matter what you're talking about aap interview kar rahe ho aap jo bhi kar rahe ho log personality se attach ho jate hain logo ko kisi ek insaan ke bare mein koi cheez achhi lagti hai isliye wo unko dekhte hain the last thing of course is guest prep this is i think only and only when you're doing an interview with somebody and coming from the television business we are doing that almost for every other bulletin especially given the current uh, covid 19 times that we are all in uh, uh, hamari on ground shoot ruk chuke hain kyunki hamari camera person aur jo crew hai wo on ground nahi ja rahi hai to hum zyada interviews kar rahe hain aap koi bhi channel dekhiye that's something that you will notice which essentially means knowing uh, a lot about the subject that you're talking to but also knowing about your guest so you have to prep you have to know you cannot walk in blind into any interview i haven't ever done that i haven't seen my seniors who've been in the business for 20 plus years do that they still prepare for every interview so preparation is key for any interview that you're doing and uh, it, it, it's a it's a joke ki aapko kaisa lag raha hai ya aapko iske bare mein kya lagta hai nobody asks that or at least a good journalist will never ask that right keep your keep your questions brief know your guest figure out what they have been doing what your story is on have a chat offline before you hit that record button on the camera speaking of camera you have to uh, figure out how you're shooting on and the easiest way to shoot on of course at this point is your smartphone um, which again स्मार्टफोन सबके पास है और आप बहुत कम प्राइस में कुछ कुछ एक्सेसरीज ले सकते हैं आपके स्मार्टफोन के ट्राईपॉड्स आते हैं पोर्टेबल माइक्स आते हैं ऑफकोर्स वी कम फ्रॉम अ स्पेस जहाँ पे हमारा इक्विपमेंट ऑलरेडी सेट है क्योंकि न्यूज चैनल के पास पास काफी इक्विपमेंट होता है आपके कैमरा से लेके आपके माइक से लेके डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कैमरा एज अ क्रिएटर मैं uh, अपनी कैमरा टीम को बोल सकती हूँ कि मैं आज ये शूट सिर्फ फोन पे करना चाह रही हूँ या ये डी एस एल आर में करूंगी और आई एम गोइंग टू शूट ऑन अ पैनासोनिक पी टू विच इज अ मच बिगर टेलीविजन कैमरा एंड ओनली आई थिंक वी गाइज यूज एनी मोर बट दैट इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू वर्क ऑन फॉर मोस्ट पीपल बहुत अच्छा कैमरा है तो आप बहुत ईजिली अच्छी वीडियो शूट कर सकते हैं एंड देर आर मल्टीपल ट्यूटोरियल आउट देर जो आपको बता सकती है including the redmi tutorial which talks about how to shoot good looking content simply by using your smartphone camera so you don't have to worry about investing in a dslr or 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 in any other camera just use your phone use existing gadgets and of course then you know as you progress you can take a call on how much you want to invest uh, in in your equipment audio prep again um, is is as i said depending on what you're shooting on your audio prep is done accordingly aapki वॉइस साउंड आप बहुत सारी वीडियो देखोगे उसमें एक एक्ो होती है कुछ कुछ लोग बात करते हुए उनका ऑडियो डिप करता है सो दोज आर थिंग्स दैट आर नॉट ऑफकोर्स दे नॉट प्रोफेशनली क्रिएटेड वीडियोज बट दीज आर जस्ट थिंग्स दैट वी हैव टू कीप इन माइंड दैट वॉट एवर वी डू इवन इफ इट इज अ थर्टी सेकेंड वीडियो इट नीड्स टू बी प्रॉपर देर शुड बी एनी ग्लिचेज एंड या योर कॉन्टेंट शुड लुक सीमलेस इट शुड लुक 
that you have put some thought into it and not just started rec- you know recording content uh one thing i would want to like like talk about the prep and i don't know uh, assuming a lot of them are first time users is even tiktok videos has so much thought in it you might think it's just a matter of 15 seconds but the most popular tiktok creators produce it with a lot of thought with a lot of content so preparation is key for no matter what video you're producing i think i've overall covered uh, everything and i think i'll talk it back to ankit now and uh, yeah if uh, you want me to add along anything along the way uh, that would be great and uh, yeah let's take it forward from now those are some absolutely fantastic uh, tips mega thanks so much for sharing that um i think i'm afraid my internet connection might be unstable here uh, but i mean just for everyone's benefit all of us are sitting either in our houses uh, or our home offices and we are doing this uh, of course sandeep and bharat are sitting in their respective youtube studio jahan par wo content banate hain um, and we are trying to do this um, i'll just take one question which somebody wrote here in the comments ki redmi creator academy ka maqsad kya hai uh, before we get into uh, other amazing things about production that bharat and sandeep are going to talk about we've got couple of hundred people joining us here and watching thank you so much for joining redmi creator academy ka purpose ek hi hai कि आप में से जो मी फैंस हैं जो कम्युनिटी हैं जो रेडमी से और शामी से इतना प्यार करते हैं और जितने सारे लोग कंटेंट क्रिएटर बनना चाहते हैं तो ये हमारी कोशिश है हमारी पहल है इस क्वारंटीन लॉकडाउन के माहौल में कि कर कैसे घर बैठे आपको एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री तरीके से सम ऑफ द बेस्ट वॉइसिस ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्टेंट क्रिएशन स्पेस वो आके आपके साथ टिप्स शेयर कैसे कर सकते हैं दैट इज द होल आइडिया और इस हफ्ते हम फोकस कर रहे हैं यूट्यूब कॉन्टेंट क्रिएटर्स पे विच इज वाई यू हैव सम ऑफ इंडिया टॉप यूट्यूबर्स हियर ऑन द सेशन ओके अगला जो पड़ाव है अगला जो हिस्सा है वहां पे हम बात करने वाले हैं प्रोडक्शन की एंड जैसे प्री प्रोडक्शन जैसे आप कोई खाना बनाते हैं तो आप तमाम सामग्री और तमाम इंग्रीडियंट जैसे तैयार करते हैं दैट इज कॉल्ड मीजो प्लास्ट सीन होता है प्री प्रोडक्शन एंड जो वीडियो प्रोडक्शन है नाउ इज द टाइम फॉर द मास्टर शेफ टू डू हिज अवर मैजिक एंड द मास्टर शेफ हुज गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द वीडियो प्रोडक्शन हियर टुडे इज नॉन अदर दैन भरत नागपाल ऑफ आई ज्ञान अगर आप इनके चैनल को देखेंगे तो इनके वीडियोज में एक बहुत ही सोफिस्टिकेटेड इंटरनेशनल लुक आपको दिखाई देगा बहुत ही क्रिस्प क्वालिटी का वीडियो फुटेज दिखाई देगा और ये सालों तक प्रैक्टिस की है भारत ने सो ओवर टू यू भारत प्लीज टेक अस थ्रू वीडियो प्रोडक्शन इन डिटेल एंड टॉक टू अस अबाउट ऑल द एस्पेक्ट्स आई मीन देयर इज अ लॉट दैट वन कैन डू फॉर वीडियो प्रोडक्शन एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड प्रिपरेशन व्हिच इज व्हाट मेगा वाज बेसिकली सॉर्ट ऑफ हाइलाइटिंग बट फ्यू थिंग्स दैट आर रियली इंपॉर्टेंट आर व्हाट यू आर शूटिंग व्हाई यू आर शूटिंग इट एंड व्हाट यू आर शूटिंग इट विद so that's where the production aspect of it comes along uh location is also relevant for uh people who are creating content for the internet and it's important in the sense that you want to know what kind of background you have you want to know what kind of uh props you have you want to know what lighting you have and based on that is how you plan your shoot so there are few things uh, that i mentioned right here the first thing is of course the camera settings and knowing your gear whether you're shooting on a smartphone or a dslr knowing your gear understanding what it's capable of what the settings are uh, what resolutions you can shoot at uh, whether or not you can swap lenses so what lenses are available all of these things are really crucial as uh, you start your production process so uh, a few camera settings just by understanding them the rule of the shutter um, understanding how aperture works understanding how iso works these are things that i can't explain at this moment uh, in just a few minutes but understanding them going and checking out some videos on how aperture and how iso works uh, would be really important for somebody who's starting out video content uh, we do have certain settings and uh, those are if you have a video for example set at uh 50 fps or 60 fps so if you're shooting full hd video at 60 fps you want to keep your shutter at anywhere from 100 to 120 uh 
one over 100 or one over 120. So that's your shutter speed. You always want to have double the number in terms of the FPS on the shutter. And this is a simple rule. It allows your videos to look smoother. Um, the same thing goes for aperture. If you want more depth, you want a smaller number on the aperture. And if you want more sort of things in focus, the foreground and the background, you want to keep uh, the shutter uh, number higher, which makes the shutter angle narrower. Again, I don't want to get into too much detail over shutter. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get into too much detail over the aperture and ISO and shutter, but I would say that learning these things about your cameras, whether you're shooting on a smartphone or a DSLR is crucial, and that will allow you to set up how you shoot your videos. Another important aspect is lighting. You can always shoot in natural light, and that is the best possible way. And I think uh, uh, the other two guys here will agree with me as uh, that lighting is really crucial. Uh, the good thing about lighting is that you can also artificially introduce lighting in a video. So whether you're shooting an object or a person, uh, getting some light on your subject uh, will allow you to get a better uh, video in general, and then also allow you to highlight certain aspects of a product or a person as well. So if you want to highlight some features of a person, uh, you can angle the lighting in a certain way. And reading up about lighting and watching some tutorials on lighting will also allow you to sort of get into that zone and get better lighting for your videos. For cameras, audio is, I think, the most underlooked or overlooked uh, uh, aspect when a lot of uh, guys on YouTube start creating. And uh, I think that in itself is something that uh, can be a masterclass of its own, uh, which means that understanding audio, understanding your environment, reducing echoes, making sure uh, that your audio is in sync, all of these things uh, will allow for a better end output on the video. Because 90% of the time, when somebody is watching your content, they are looking at what they see on the screen, but they are listening to you in the background. So what is happening is that if your video and your audio don't sound as good as each other, then the entire uh, effect of the video goes away. So you might have like a very nice looking video in 4K, 60 FPS, HDR, everything. But if you have like really bad audio, then the experience of that video will sort of go away. So understanding audio is really important. and. You have lots of options with audio. So you can get a wireless microphone. Uh, you can also get an on-camera microphone, which is uh, known as a shotgun microphone. You can also get a wired microphone. If your phone or your DSLR does have a mic input, use that to improve the audio input of your videos. It's uh, something that will really elevate your creation experience. Now, there are uh, so I'm, I'm also, I'm just going to come in here, Bharat. Uh, mm -hmm. There are also some very relevant questions coming in here. Uh, so just yeah. going to take two of those. Uh, sure. Mohammad Farooq has written, is there any need of extra lighting if he's shooting using his mobile phone? So lighting is relevant when the circumstance requires it. If you're shooting outdoors, you don't need any additional lighting. If the light is good, if you're indoors and you have direct sunlight coming in, you don't need additional lighting. So for example, where I'm sitting right now, I have a lot of sunlight coming in. And where, for example, Ankit is sitting right now, he has a lot of natural light coming in. So you may not need uh, additional lighting. Uh, also, if you have a well-lit room, you may not need an additional uh, light source. So you can just turn on your regular lights and uh, have uh, things happen. But if you want to highlight a subject, lighting it from a side or lighting it from the back will allow you to get a certain uh, thing better in focus and your subject better in focus. And uh, that is just the purpose of additional lighting. You don't essentially need it if you have enough light. But if you're shooting on a smartphone, uh, in most cases, the size of the sensor versus a DSLR is much smaller. So the more light you have, uh, the better your video output will be at the end of it. Okay, perfect. Pushpita Mohanty is asking which audio devices to be used uh, for the best recording quality. Uh, again, like I said, there is no gold standard for the best. Uh, for everyone, it's a different uh, thing. But um, an audio device, you can directly record on your smartphone. You can have a microphone connected to the smartphone and uh, record on that. You can have an external recorder. You could be recording directly on a PC or a laptop. Uh, there are several ways of recording. Whatever works for you and whatever makes your audio sound the best is the best audio solution. 
Okay, uh, just going to take this question and Sandeep uh, is actually going to be talk talking a lot about post-production. Observer Sidhan Chaturvedi writes, uh, what about video editing? Well, Sandeep is going to talk about video editing in detail, uh, so I'll let him take that. Uh, over to you, Bharat. Uh, you had some accessories that you had shared with me right. uh, on video. And in fact, for everybody watching this, everything that Megha was saying that, you know, he online jane se pehle, offline dher sari tayari kardi padti hai. To iske misal ke taur pe, aaj ka jo session hai, jis mein teen guest hai humare saath, humne kal ya parso hi ek WhatsApp group shuru kar diya tha, jis mein hum ek dousre ke saath baate kar rahe the. I was briefing the guests, mein unke feedback aur inputs le raha tha. And jo bhi assets tayar karne the is live session ke liye, they have already mailed it to me. We've downloaded, put it in the PowerPoint presentation. So, this is a pre-production part of what I wanted to tell you. I'm just going to go over to the next slide, Bharat, so you can talk about some of the accessories for stabilization. Sure. Now, this is bearing in mind that you're using a smartphone. So, something like this, which is a grip that allows you to hold your smartphone from both sides without interfering with... Uh, the device in itself uh, is really good. You can also mount uh, microphones and lights on uh, the top of this, uh, which allows you to get uh, a few more accessories on a smartphone, which doesn't usually have mounts, etc. And uh, in general, if you're using this, you can get stable videos. You're not get adding your own body shake to the camera. Even though a lot of new smartphones have uh, stabilizers inbuilt, this is a form of a physical stabilizer uh, which will allow you to not only uh, use the smartphone, uh, sort of mount it on here, you can mount accessories, and then you can mount the entire thing on a tripod or a monopod is something that you can do. So this is, again, available from various brands. There is no one brand to uh, talk about in terms of the grip. Uh, this is another uh, device. This is a basically smartphone clamp that allows you to hold your phone and then mount it on a tripod. And this also has a hot uh, cold shoe mount which allows you to mount a LED light or uh, maybe a microphone. So just giving you more versatility is uh, something that uh, all of these accessories will do. Uh, getting a small LED light like this, somebody was asking if smartphone videos require LED lights. So getting a small LED light like this will allow you to get smaller things into uh, effect and into focus. And then this uses standard batteries as well. So you can swap out the batteries even if you're on a location shooting somewhere. So this will give you some basic additional lighting. So if you're traveling or something, uh, a simple small light will allow you to uh, sort of highlight your subject easily and uh, add some more definition to the video. This is again something which is, it's a fairly uh, inexpensive, uh, flexible tripod. And uh, this again can add a whole level of uh, production to your, uh, to your content. And uh, now it comes with a smartphone clamp as well. So you can mount your smartphone, hang it somewhere, uh, if you don't have a tripod, so you can hang your smartphone at a height and then shoot yourself or a product. And then you can also hold it in your hand to get a, a better stable sort of a shot if that's what you're aiming for. So, I mean, these are some accessories that are uh, definitely available. Uh, this is an example of lighting that I was talking about earlier. So you may have a subject which is not extremely well lit. And like I said, if you may have good enough lighting, but you can see that there's a lot of shadow happening on everything in this shot. And but just uh, simply turning on the light, you can sort of counteract that shadow and improve the subject a little bit. Here are uh, some apps uh, that you can use on uh, your smartphone. Uh, Filmic is something that we personally use a lot. And uh, so you can use Filmic to create content. There's a lot of options that unlocks uh, your camera and allows you to shoot in various frame rates. You can completely have manual settings, even though a lot of new uh, cameras, including Redmi's camera now comes with a pro video mode, uh, Filmic just is a slightly more professional software. Uh, of course, the Cinema 5V as well, FV5, sorry, as well. And uh, it's something that uh, a lot of people use as well. I personally prefer Filmic, but Cinema FV5 is also something that you can use to start off with. Okay, I guess uh, Mega has a question for Bharat. I'm liking how the panelists are also asking each other's questions. That's perfect knowledge transfer. Yes, Go for it. yes of course, we're all here to learn something new. But uh, Bharat, just curious, uh, because, you know, uh, as I mentioned that we uh, in the news business uh, end up creating a lot of content for television, which gets repurposed and repackaged uh, for online. But I wanted to understand your approach, uh, especially, say, for instance, a gadget is launched. 
so what is your top criteria at that point do you want to be the first to put it out or kitna time lagta hai from the time that you review a device to shooting all of this to producing it and finally publishing your content so uh, it it's totally dependent on a device what kind of a device it is and how much time we take to sort of shoot it but more importantly we are i'm for me the criteria is not to be the first one out there the, for me the criteria is always to have a better video uh, and uh, so we don't do reviews on the day of the launch it only we can only do it if we've had the device for a long enough time so usually to 7 to 10 days to review a product uh but if we get the device pre launch uh, then we review it over the period of 7 to 8 days then we shoot uh the product and then we want to have the content uh live if we have that opportunity at the time of the launch but if we get a product closer to launch then for us the uh, uh priority is to do like a hands on video or an unboxing video or something which gives you the basics of the device but not really a review of the device so that right is more important and then for me personally the content and how we shoot it is more important than the time as such so we may miss a timeline or a deadline uh but that may be simply because something was wrong in the video and we need we needed to go and sort of re-export it and uh, re-upload it so i'm not really fixed on times although it is really important for somebody who's starting out because when the excitement is there on uh, the internet is when you want to have your content go out so how do they know it's ready kyunki bahut sare log uh, i i was also looking at the youtube comments bahut sare log naye content creators hain how do they know ki ha my video is ready ab main isko publish kar sakti hu ya kar sakta hu i mean that's totally an understanding uh, process because you'll only know if your video is ready if you've gone through if you had an idea and you said okay i'm going to do this and if at the end of the entire process of pre production production and post production if you think that you've achieved somewhere closer to that idea is when your video is ready at the end of it going back and rechecking your content is really important so we we do four rechecks before we upload a video and uh, that is something that a lot of people don't do and even after doing rechecks we miss out on certain things so it it is really important to sort of keep going back and checking your content and making sure everything that you're putting out is according to what you want to put out Okay, Mega. I'm quickly going to take a question here that's come about scripting. Uh, thank you for that answer, Bharat. MGS Aviation is asking, and thank you, MGS Aviation. You've been tuning in every single day, and you make content about aviation. Uh, so that's amazing. Keep it up. Uh, he's asking, hmm. should I make a script for videos less than five minutes? I make text videos, no audio. What do you have to say? okay so uh, that is one thing that a lot of people have started uh, of course doing uh, uh, especially for a lot of those online platforms because most people are scrolling through their videos on mute so uh, chatter boxes like you and me are not relevant or may not be relevant anymore uh, but especially for text video it purely depends on visual i would say that that has to be the determining factor of how long your video should be if you have very gripping visuals that is supported by text you can probably extend that video up to 5 minutes depending on how topical it is how interesting it is. sort of those uh, uh, you know i'm sure if if but if it's if it's information heavy which i'm assuming uh, if the content is related to aviation i'm not sure what part of aviation I, uh, you know is our user talking about at this point but if it's very information heavy keep it crisp keep it under 2 minutes because you don't want to overwhelm people with figures facts numbers and uh, jargons that they may not understand in the first go so an ideal duration for a text heavy video would be about 2 to 2 and a half minutes which is what we follow for any of our typical news packages as well because a lot of information a lot of facts are thrown in at the user uh, but because you are on a platform where people can replay it i would say that keep that in mind is it tech is it information heavy keep it short but if you have gripping visuals go up to 5 minutes anything more than that i, I don't know i mean that's just uphill. my personal um you know attention span if i'm just reading text yeah got it got it 
Thank you so much for that, Mega. Uh, there's a question that Sumukh has written. Uh, how do you make thumbnails? Uh, Sandeep Sarma of Rev Atlas is going to be talking about thumbnails along with a bunch of other things for video post production. Uh, before that, Bharat, a quick question uh, by a user called Everything About Everything uh, asks, which type of mic should I use for vlogging using phone? Uh, is there any particular brand, Bharat, that you can probably help people with? Um, and which platform they can probably go and buy this on? Is it Amazon? Is it Flipkart? Is there any other particular camera store? What do you recommend? Um, I mean, there are lots of microphones that one can buy uh, for uh, shooting on their phone. If you're doing blogs, uh, you can buy a wired mic, which is a lapel mic, which you can hide in your shirt or your t-shirt. Uh, depending on what you're wearing that day. And then that I think will give you the best audio. But if you're somebody who wants to record the surroundings as well, if you want to just flip your camera and record somebody else as well, uh, then a, uh, a shotgun microphone is ideal. You, you need to get like a cage or a mount for your smartphone where you can mount a, a, a shotgun mic on the top. A road makes some really nice microphones uh, that one can pick up. They're also smartphone compatible. And they're readily available everywhere. All e-commerce websites you can easily go to, or you can go to a camera store and pick them up. So any Rode microphone uh, that you like that fits your budget, there are lots of microphones that they make. They make beginner style uh, shotgun microphones as well as really high-end professional uh, shotgun microphones. So picking up one of those uh, will solve your problem. Okay, a lot of you users are writing in about mics to use with your smartphones, with your Redmi phones, with your Poco phones. Uh, that's exactly the answer that Bharat just gave. Uh, but I would suggest if there is a physical on ground, agar koi camera store ya dukan hogi aapke shahar mein, please wahan pe jaiye ka apna mobile phone leke jaiye jiske upar aap shoot karna chahte hain. Mic attach karke dekhiye agar Bluetooth mic hai ya wired mic hai jo 3.5 mm jack mein jata hai. Record karke dekhiye video, audio quality suniye, pasand aaye tabhi kharidiye because hazaar or rupai ki ye accessories hoti hain. Over to Sandeep Sarma, uh, jo Rev Atlas YouTube channel chal aate hain. और बहुत ही पेशेंटली इंतजार कर रहे हैं लगभग एक घंटे से कि अब उनकी बारी आएगी अपना टाइम आएगा टू टॉक अबाउट वीडियो पोस्ट प्रोडक्शन सो ओवर टू यू संदीप आई एब्सोल्युटली लव्ड 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 द वीडियो दैट यू मेड यूजिंग द Redmi Note 9 Pro इन केरला वेरी रिसेंटली व्हेन यू वेंट ऑन अ छुट्टी बिल्कुल लॉकडाउन से कुछ घंटों पहले आपने वो वीडियो डाला था बाहर एंड लॉट ऑफ वंडर लस्ट जग गई थी हमारे अंदर वो देखिए ओवर टू यू Yeah, so uh, I'll actually start by talking about music first, considering that uh, you know the video that you mentioned, especially that was something that was envisioned with the song in mind first. So one of the things that most people uh, kind of take for granted is audio. Like Bharat said, audio is very important when it comes to a video. Not just the video quality itself, but even the audio quality plays a huge role in terms of the overall look and feel. And that's how people judge how good your production quality is. So when you're doing your pre-production sort of thing, it's also important to try and get an idea uh, on the kind of music that you would be using for a particular video. So I I kind of get different vibes from different smartphones. So some might be a bit futuristic. So I would go for something uh, you know a bit trance-like, a bit more beats, uh, a bit more electro, the, those kind of music. But if it's some other smartphone, then it has a different vibe. Then I go for music that matches it. So what happens when you select music ahead of time is that when you're shooting a particular video, you keep that song in mind, and every single shot that you take is kind of automatically, I would say, overlaid onto the music in your mind itself. It helps you shoot better, and as a result, will help you better in your post production as well. So if you don't have anything in mind, it's still fine. You can still sort of find uh, songs that are matching towards what you shot. But it's always best to find the song or the music uh, that you want ahead of time, so that this process becomes much easier for you. So now, what sort of music can you use, especially on a platform like YouTube? So one of the main issues that most people face is copyright issues, considering that uh, you know what, what sort of copyright music uh, should I use, what sort of uh, song should I use in order to avoid being in fine or avoiding any legal issues. So YouTube itself has a huge library where You can uh, browse different music effects, etc., and you can apply that to your videos. But apart from uh, YouTube itself, there are a bunch of places that you can go towards. And one of my favorite places is SoundCloud. 
So SoundCloud has a huge list of indie creators, music creators or artists, and most of them uh, generally have, you know, their terms and conditions written on the profile page, whether you can use it without permission by just giving them credit and description, or whether you actually have to kind of ask them for it. And most of the time I have kind of, uh, you know, had no issues with getting them to uh, basically, okay, sorry, voice, I'm not sure what was wrong with the voice. I'll try it again. Yeah, I think it might be an internet issue because uh, it keeps going up and down, up and down. It probably can't okay. be a hardware issue. And it's ironic yeah. considering you're speaking about audio and music or Aapki Awaaz, which is the Samandar Ke Leheron Ki Tarah Open Neeche Ja Rhi Hai. But uh, we've got my bad. So we have. No, it's okay. No yeah, worries. yeah. So, so, so basically, you can ask the artist if they are willing to give you uh, the royalty free usage of their music and in turn it helps them also get better exposure. So that's another way in which you can kind of mutually promote each other, promote other artists as well as get wonderful tracks that you can use in your videos. Apart from this, there's also a third option of paid subscription or uh, you know paid music where you can either purchase one single song for use in your video or videos or you can also go for subscription based service like Epidemic Sound which gives you, you know, a, a huge library for a fixed cost per month. And this means that you can use any of their songs without having any legal issues or copyright issues. And that gives you a lot of peace of mind. And it also has a huge library with great music and one that could fit almost your entire age. So regardless- You know, since you're talking music, about uh, music, Sandeep, uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Since you're talking about music, I actually want to uh, ask Megha and Bharat both. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, people here know, uh, but Bharat Nagpal has an alter ego called DJ Krim. DJ Krim. Uh, don't mix it up with DJ Shrimp, who eats a lot of shrimps and DJs. But uh, DJ Krim, so Bharat ka jo signature Aigyan uh, videos ka opening title track tha. It is a song track that he has composed himself and that completely blows my mind. Uh, so Bharat, if you can talk about royalty free music, how to acquire that, where to get it from, if you're not a DJ yourself. And Megha, if you have any tips and tricks to share on that. Bharat, you go first. I mean, what uh, Sandeep said is really uh, what the crux of it is. You can go choose a service that allows you to get some royalty free, uh, free music for uh, YouTube. And uh, you can also speak to creators. Uh, sometimes a creator will reach out to you and say, hey, why don't you use my music in your videos? And uh, that, again, if you like the music, if it's good enough music for you to use, uh, then it works out for both people. Uh, it helps you promote the guy who created the music, and then you get music for your videos. Um, creating music is something that is obviously completely royalty free. Uh, then there is no asking for permission, and there is no copyright issue later on. So if you have that ability or if you have uh, that inclination, then creating your own music will also allow you to, uh, and uh, Sandeep was talking about how he would visualize what he's shooting based on the music. Uh, initially in the good old days of IGAN, what I would do is I would shoot while imagining what the music would be. And then I would go and create that music for the background score of the video. So for me, uh, music, as a background filler is really important. Most of my videos do have a background music on them. A lot of people don't put uh, music in the background. I just feel that if you're doing a lot of conversation, uh, especially in tech videos, it can get really heavy. So music allows you to sort of make the viewer comfortable and getting the right kind of music is really important. Back to you. Okay, fantastic. Megha, do you have any points about uh, royalty free yep. or copyright free music? Uh, I so, so I, I, I think I, I think uh, Bharat and Sandeep have spoken about that. But what I would recommend, like an on-ground and actionable insight, something jo nai YouTube creators or content creators hai, wo kar sakte hai, to understand the importance of music. Aap same video ko teen alag music mein render karo, and you will understand what and how important music is for your edit. Same video, same visuals, same everything, but just change the music. Or uski feel completely changes, right? And that's when you will understand that you will have to, music cannot be the last element of your video. When you're making a video, like Bharat said, I also like putting music even when a conversation is on and throughout my uh, review videos as well. There is never a point, unless it's an interview, because then it's very jarring. Ho jata hai. But if you have visuals and AC cut, hai, 
तो आप डेफिनेटली उसमें म्यूजिक डालिए और म्यूजिक के हिसाब से अपनी वीडियोस एडिट करिए लेट म्यूजिक नॉट बी एन आफ्टर थॉट इज व्हाट माय टू सेंस वुड बी इन दिस दैट्स अ फैंटास्टिक पॉइंट दैट्स अ ग्रेट पॉइंट प्रतीक यहां पे पूछ रहे हैं कमेंट्स में एनसीएस म्यूजिक व्हिच इज अ YouTube चैनल नो कॉपीराइट साउंड्स एनसीएस म्यूजिक अलाउज अस टू यूज देयर म्यूजिक फ्रीली विदाउट कॉपीराइट हैव एनी ऑफ यू यूज्ड एनसीएस म्यूजिक के ट्रैक्स एंड इज इट जेन्युइनली कॉपीराइट फ्री भरत संदीप एनी ऑफ यू so i have not actually used ncs music in particular but there are various youtube channels itself which are dedicated to copyright free music uh my advice is you can actually use it but kind of make it uh, like a private video before actually publishing it because youtube within around half an hour or one hour they actually give you an idea on whether this is copyright free music or not because generally before publishing if you leave it for some time it does the copyright check in the background and after that if it indeed is copyright free you can go ahead and publish it but if there is an issue you can take it down and add another track to it and then proceed with it so youtube itself has a built in copyright tool so that would help you judge whether this copyright free music or not but most of the time these services have worked out fine and i think you just need to give them credit in the description correct you have to give them credit in the video description uh kaun se channel se kaun se artist ka track hai that suffices a lot of times okay why don't you continue uh, sandeep and talk to us about some of the mobile apps or pc software that people can use uh, to edit their yeah. youtube videos yeah so uh mobile apps i mean there's so many different apps that you can use and which one someone would prefer over the other basically it depends on your personal uh sort of uh, interest and what you find easier to use more intuitive to use but some of the popular options that i have tried as well include premiere rush from adobe then luma fusion which is actually on the ios side of things and this keen master this filmora go there's basically n number of applications that you can use and most of them are free but they do have some sort of restriction in terms of the maximum resolution that you can go to or they might have a watermark on your video which you can remove by paying a small amount of money which to be fair if you're considering this as a serious uh, uh sort of thing uh, that is being in youtube then that amount of money is very negligible and i think it's worth paying for that especially to uh, you know sort of uh, help the people that develop these kind of applications now of course just because you have shot something on your phone does not mean you have to edit on your phone using a pc or a mac will definitely give you much more versatility and much more room to play with and that's why it's important uh, to also have some pc software if you have a pc make use of it i use adobe premiere pro personally uh, i also use fcpx from time to time when i'm using mac then there's also davinci resolve which is a free software and it is incredibly you know extensive and in fact is better than some of the other paid software as well in certain terms but at the end of the day it's it takes some learning there's a learning curve to all these applications but once you get through that it's actually very easy and there are tons of tutorials also available online where you can learn how to actually edit all these uh, you know on all these different software now the next thing i would like to talk about is graphics so graphics is something that most of these applications come with there are a preset uh a number of uh, you know text and uh, video effects that you can use in order to spice up your video at the end of the day but uh, sometimes that's not enough and that's when you need to go online search for it and there are tons of free packs available with different graphics that you can download if you just google search them or in case you want something a bit more sophisticated you can go to fiverr where you can ask people to create certain graphics or create certain effects for you and you don't have to do it yourself lastly there's also the method where you can create the graphics yourself but that's something that only advanced people do they use after effects and different software to kind of get the best uh you know effects possible but it does take some learning it does take some time to get there so i would suggest that you can start off by using the free effects that are available in the software itself we've been getting a lot of questions about thumbnails sure. sandeep uh, that's a lot okay. of great information that you've shared uh, and yeah. thumbnails ko leke uh, i think siddhant and a um, couple of other people were asking ki what is the objective of a thumbnail should it just be eye catching should it have a lot of text and basically summary of what the video is all about or what most youtubers are doing these days and i don't know who really started the trend probably internationally which is they have a oh my god i'm so surprised expression and a phone in their hand <laughs> it's 
pretty much yeah. become the template of so many YouTube videos. Uh, so what really right. is the purpose of a thumbnail and uh, what software do you recommend uh, that people use for it? So the purpose of a thumbnail is basically to get someone to click your video. That, that is true. But I personally am opposed to all these videos where they have the phone out and they have you know, some shocked expression or them using lit uh, icons and stuff like that. I, I personally don't do that. I also don't add text uh, as much as possible. I try to avoid text. But then again, it depends on the kind of vibe that you are going for, especially regional channels. I've noticed that they prefer to have text on their thumbnails and not, uh, you know, not much of headline because what happens is in the headline they use English titles, but in the thumbnail they use regional uh, language. For example, Hindi or Tamil, they use different language in the thumbnail. And considering that thumbnail is the first thing that you see and then you read the title, it's very important to have a good thumbnail. So one of the other tips that I can offer is that based on how large of an audience you have using mobile phones, you have to optimize the thumbnails for your mobile phones and not your PC. Because a lot of time what happens is creators are actually uh, creating content and thumbnails and all these things on the PC. And on PC it looks good, but when you come to a smartphone experience, it looks very different. And what I like to do is I kind of like to increase the exposure a bit, considering it looks a bit darker when the overall image is smaller. So increase the exposure a bit so that it looks better on a smartphone as opposed to just looking good on a PC itself. Now, when it comes to software, the, the whole bunch of editors that you can use uh, in order to create a thumbnail, you can use a stock editor. You can use a, a tool such as VSCO, which is one of the applications that I use. Uh, I think you're bringing it on screen now. I think the different screenshot. Wait. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. So there's there's VSCO. There's uh, one particular app that I really like called Lens Distortions, which helps you add a sort of flare effect. Uh, to most of these thumbnails that you want. So essentially getting a flare effect on photos from a smartphone, for example, is not really easy. But if you have an app like Lens Distortion, you can sort of mimic this flare effect. Uh, and it kind of looks pretty eye-catching, I would say. And also many a time I've seen people click on a thumbnail, which is better. Even when I've asked my friends, which is better, they prefer the one with the uh, you know, Lens Distortion added to it. So that's another app that you can make use of in order to create more visually pleasing thumbnails and sort of, uh, uh, you know, works both on PC and uh, the phone. Now, okay. the last thing I've also seen is a lot of people use Snapseed. Uh, it's, it's a very popular sort of photo editor, uh, but then again, it has both an advanced side as well as a basic side. And I would suggest using a stock editor itself on most phones, that's good enough in order to just tweak the photos. But at the end of it, you have to make sure that the photo is in 16 by 9 so that you can get the maximum uh, thumbnail estate that's available. Because most of the phones shoot in 4 is to 3 by default. But you have to actually crop it to 16 is to 9 now to make use of that thumbnail estate. Those are great tips, Sandy. Great tips. People are loving it in the comments. Okay. Uh, quick question, if any of you would like to take that. Uh, at which bit rate should I upload a video? Is it okay to go below 4,000? That's a super technical question. And uh, I don't understand what that means. Bharat, Sandeep, okay. any of you? Yeah, so, so that's one of the things that I will be covering. Uh, so I, I'll start off by talking about the basic export quality and stuff and then dive into his question. So uh, a lot of people ask me whether it's necessary to sort of export in 4K uh, or if it's okay to do 1080p or 1440p. And uh, the... Actual truth is that 1080p is good enough considering that most smartphones don't even support anything about 1080p. And my channel personally, the bulk of people watching content on my channel is 86%, uh, I think, when I checked last, are watching content from their smartphones. So although I upload in 4K, the vast majority can't even view it in full 4K because their smartphone does not support it and YouTube does not support 4K streaming on smartphones. So because of that, it's not entirely essential to export a video or even upload a video in full 4K. What matters more is perhaps choosing the right frame rate for your video. For example, now with the fastest screen refresh rate that have come on smartphones, if you're shooting a video which kind of highlights those things, you need to go for higher frame rate. So shooting in 60 frame rate as opposed to 30 FPS would make more sense than actually shooting in 4K uh, instead of 1080p. And also in terms of 
the uh, bit rate. Now, bit rate again is something uh, you know that you don't necessarily need to go overboard, but 4,000 kbps is kind of small. One of the reasons why people try to minimize um, the bit rate is to prevent the file size from going too high. And as a result, it would allow them to up upload files also easier. And it also makes sure that they don't, uh, I mean, it doesn't affect much of their bandwidth as well. But 4,000, even a 1080p seems pretty low. In my honest opinion, I, I would say going to around 15,000 or 20,000 at least in terms of 1080p content if you want good quality. Bharat, what are your opinions on 4K workflow? You know, there's a lot of talk around 4K. Halaki, uh, right now, I might, uh, it's important to remind everyone that, you know, globally, YouTube and Google have limited uh, streaming um, resolution to standard definition in most cases, because considering the billions of people who are in lockdown in their respective countries uh, because of the coronavirus outbreak. So internet pe uska zada bhar na pade. Iske wajay se, I think this is a temporary measure that a lot of video streaming sites across the world are taking. But overall, in a post-lockdown world, uh, where people can choose multiple different settings for streaming, uh, 480p, which seems to be India's favorite and default resolution, because it saves enough data and still gives, you know, clear-ish image. Uh, what do you think of the whole 4K versus 1080p battle? I mean, there's not really a battle. Uh, 1080p is a good output. And if you have a good uh, production timeline, then and you have equipment that can give you a good output, then 1080p is a really good resolution to work with. The more important thing is, I think, understanding why you want to shoot in 4K is uh, what is crucial. I mean, we've been shooting in 4K for about five years now, maybe a little bit more than that, when people uh, weren't even talking about 4K. There wasn't even a conversation on 4K televisions. Uh, we've been shooting 4K since then. So allowing uh, uh, 4K allows you to create content uh, which is really workable. So we shoot in higher resolutions simply because it allows us to then maybe crop into the video a little bit, uh, edit uh, the content in a certain way and give us a better output. We shoot beyond 4K uh, whenever we can. Um, and then we bring uh, the resolution down to 4K because I think that is an optimal format for us. But for a lot of people, 1080p is a really good format still, as you said, most, uh, as Sandeep said, in fact, that most smartphones can barely support 1080p and because maximum consumption of YouTube videos or any kind of content, whether it's uh, Instagram videos or IGTV or even Facebook content is on a smartphone. And a lot of these places, a lot of people are watching this content, not uh, content, not even in landscape, but in portrait. So they're really not using the resolution that you're putting out there. Unless you're creating something that is purely based on aesthetic, 1080p is uh, something that you can really work with. And again, you may want to shoot in 4K just so that you can crop into certain frames, just so that you can zoom into certain things and have a bigger sort of canvas to work with. But then exporting it in 1080p is should work for a lot of people. As far as bitrate is concerned, I've always, always stuck with 48K. Uh, and that's just something that uh, I think is a good audio output. Uh, you can use a lower bitrate, uh, but I just feel that already YouTube is going to compress your audio quite a lot. So giving it a bigger thing to compress is better because then your end result uh, will come out better. So whatever you put, whether it's 4,000, 15,000, 20,000, YouTube is going to compress it further. And then the result that you get may not be what you are expecting from your 4K, 10K, 15K. So it's always better to have a, a larger file going up there. If you can, if you have the bandwidth, if you have the internet access, then it's always better to have a bigger file going up there uh, because then YouTube will compress it and then the video will start to degrade a little bit. You'll never get what you pub, uh, create on your smartphone or your PC. You'll never get that output when you upload it to a streaming site. Okay, uh, there's a super technical question that I'm going to uh, present to you guys. It's up to uh, Bharat, uh, Megha, or Sandeep, uh, whoever wants to choose this. Sumuk is asking, I recently shot a video in 1080p 60fps and chose 59.9 non-drop frame rate while rendering. But when I uploaded the video, I could stream in 50fps. Can you help me what exact format I should render the video in?
you just repeat the question what he uploaded it and he was able to get only 50 correct on youtube playback he could stream it only at 50 fps jabki he shot and edited and exported it at 60 fps so when he's playing it locally it's at 60 fps still i'm assuming yes that might be the case okay. but when he when he's streaming okay, it I'm online not, i'm not it's sure 50. why that happens but generally what happens is regardless of whether you shoot at 60 or 30 if your export uh, you know frame rate is different from your input it would result in a totally different sort of file i'm not sure why this happened why it's going to be entirely but yeah i mean th there is a setting where you can choose between ntsc and pal and ntsc generally goes for 50 frames 25 frames as opposed to 24 30 and 60 on pal but considering that his end file also has 60 fps i'm not sure why it's actually showing up as 50 on youtube i don't maybe bharat can help but i'm not sure why or sumuk you can probably go to forums and check out you know i'm sure there are youtube forums uh, that a lot of troubleshooting conversation happens or you can reach out to these gentlemen individually and share the problem uh, that you're facing with this uh, there's yeah. a question that sagar has asked uh, which is something that i would like to be among the parting notes uh, to hear from all of you amazing creators here uh, starting with you mega and then bharat and then sandeep best accessories for videography with mobile phones. I think this is the crux of what we are trying to do here at Redmi Creator Academy. Creators have amazing smartphones in their uh, pockets and uske alawa, thode hi kuch accessories ki zarurat hoti hai jisse aap ekdam professional looking content uh, bana sakte hain uh, to mega aapki kya list hogi considering aap dher sara on ground mobile journalism mojo jisse kehte hain wo karti hain desh dunya alag alag jagahon se aap sirf smartphone aur kuch chuninda accessories se amazing uh, content banati hain what would that be yeah okay so uh, i think uh, when especially when you're traveling and you're keeping it i would say keep your equipment light because आप बहुत ओवरवेलम नहीं होना चाहते पचास एक्सेसरीज के साथ सिंपल एक लाइट एक माइक uh, uh, और आपका एक स्टेबल ट्राईपॉड जो हल्की सी भी हवा आए और हिले नहीं वैसा ट्राईपॉड आपको चाहिए अगर आप आउटडोर शूट कर रहे हो इन डोर यू कैन गेट इनोवेटिव यू डोंट हैव टू इन्वेस्ट इन एक्सेसरीज फाइंड अ गुड फ्रेम फाइंड समथिंग दैट इज स्टेबल इन टर्म्स ऑफ माइक वॉट वी यूज इज अ बोया माइक विच इज नॉट as probably as good as a road but it does your work especially as bharat had mentioned you want to find a lapel mic uh, that just gets hidden in uh, your clothes you can just clip it on and you're good to go uh, so that is something that you can definitely get it's not that expensive so you can invest uh, in one of those mics find a good uh, tripod that you can adjust uh, with enough length height so that you know you can you can stand and do your recording or you can sit and do it and just use things around you you'll be surprised that how you can just use like a small box and and use it innovatively to kind of rest your phone so yes i would say don't overwhelm yourself one light one tripod and one mic of course uh, a a good phone with a good camera uh, should be enough and uh, yeah and and just get get creative with it that's what i would say That's amazing, Megha. I actually here, uh, Bharat. Iske pehle ki aap apni accessories ki list de. Uh, Pratik is actually making a great point, uh, and I don't know who Pratik is. I have not given him money for this. But he is saying that the Mi tripod is actually best for video stabilization. Um, so yes, a quick reminder: it's called the Mi Selfie Stick tripod, which comes with Bluetooth remote. Ke aata hai, and it actually costs only Rs. one thousand ninety-nine rupees on Mi.com. Of course, in the lockdown, ke chalte to, uh, deliveries are default. Hai. बट मेरे ख्याल से वंस द लॉकडाउन ओपन्स अप शेमलेस प्लग आप लोग जाके उसे भी एक्सप्लोर कर सकते हैं दैट इज नॉट फॉर आउटडोर शूटिंग अगर आप डेस्क इस्तेमाल करते हैं सो इट्स अ टाइनी लिटिल कंट्रैप्शन आप डेस्क पे रख के फ्रंट फेसिंग कैमरा से खुद के अगर व्लॉग टाइप कुछ वीडियो शूट करने हैं यू कैन डू दैट वरना आप सेल्फी स्टिक के तौर पे तो उसे आउटडोर यूज कर ही सकते हैं ओवर टू यू भरत या सो आई मीन Uh, there is one aspect of it where uh, uh, mega is completely right you want to be light with uh, your uh, with your accessories you want to have the basic things that will allow you to get started but if you want to get into something a little more serious and you want to continue shooting on your smartphone there are lots of uh, accessories that you can get a gimbal is something that is really common and popular nowadays so getting a gimbal will allow you to get that stable video especially if you're doing something out and about if you're doing a vlog 
just holding a gimbal will give you that smooth and steady video, uh, which looks really good um, and gives you a really professional feel on uh, the smartphone. Another thing that you can get uh, is a mount or a, a sort of a grip uh, that we were showing you earlier. It allows you to uh, mount accessories. So whether you're mounting a microphone, a wireless microphone, a light or something like that, uh, getting some sort of a adapter or a grip for the smartphone allows you to become a slightly uh, become slightly more versatile with your production. And uh, again, accessories are going to keep evolving. There are lots of things that you can get for your smartphone. You can now get sliders. You can get like robotic jigs, which will do the shoot for you. Uh, and there is no real end to what you can get, depending on what you're doing, what your requirement is. As you start creating content, you'll know that this will add a better flair to your video. And then you want to go pick that accessory up. Picking up stuff in the beginning only ends up with stuff uh, lying in the background. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to collect accessories. You want to start using things that you will use in your videos and then getting and buying more things that you think will elevate the quality of your videos. Sandeep, what would you, uh, what would your ideal mix be of accessories for mobile filmmaking or mobile phone workflow? Uh, so I agree with what Bharat said, like buying only the essentials initially makes sense and buy as and when needed and expand your sort of accessory base uh, when you want that sort of uh, improvement in quality or something extra that you need to do. But buying everything in the beginning itself and then trying to use it often doesn't work out and a lot of things get uh, you know, left behind unused. But a gimbal is another thing which I would also recommend, especially if you're trying to blog, because a lot of smartphone cameras these days come with uh, EIS on the rear camera, but the front camera still lacks EIS. And having the back camera stable, but the front camera not stable kind of results in a weird sort of mix and overall brings down the production quality. So investing in a gimbal or at least some sort of stabilizer or even say a gorilla pod of sorts, which can make the footage overall more stable uh, rather than just holding a phone is something that people should consider, especially if they're vlogging. And it also helps for those awesome B-roll shots when you're um, shooting a product, for example. And overall, this is something that I feel is really essential and has helped me also several times, especially when I haven't taken my camera, for, for example, in terms of shooting a B-roll. So, uh, a gimbal is definitely one of those things. Other than that, I think maybe a mic as well, in case you're planning to do a roll on the go. Uh, like Bharat said, uh, the roll shotgun mic works really well. Uh, even Boya for that matter is a more cost effective solution as Mega said. And uh, these are possibly two of the things that can elevate your video experience to a much higher level. That's fantastic, wow, okay. We've come to the end of this session, uh, lady and gentlemen. How can people reach out to you individually on social media? Which channel are you most active on? And I um, sincerely request all of you, if you have any technical questions, feel free to reach out to any of these people. Uh, keep it to the point, keep it respectable, and I'm sure you can have your answers questions. So Megha, Bharat, Sandeep, in that order, how can people reach out to you? Okay, um, I'm very active on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Twitter, of course, is going to be more conversational. But if you have any specific visual uh, queries, you can, uh, you know, probably reach out on Instagram. There's a lot of content uh, that we've anyway put out, which I keep sharing. Uh, so yeah, you can go through that. But before before I wrap, uh, and I'm sure uh, if I can quickly ask uh, Sandeep uh, about, you know, content creation and video editing in the times of COVID, uh, especially for uh, content creators, jo first time content creators, who long time content create kar rahe hai, your shooting styles and uh, you know what your shooting is not very very elaborate at this point. As I said, it's more interview based. Uh, you know the the most uh, best talk shows all across the world are doing home productions. But how can you get innovative with your edits? Uh, just so that the edits are simple, what simple apps can you use? If you can throw some light on that. Uh, that would be my personal query to the experts uh, right here. But yes, again, to recap what I just said at the beginning, you can reach out to me on Twitter and Instagram, both uh, places. My handle is at Megha Vishwana. So, uh, that question. yeah, so, so basically even my production has kind of 
taken a huge turn because generally when you look at the kind of videos that we produce it's mostly outdoor regardless of whether it's a smartphone or laptop or whatever our uh, entire production is generally outdoor in different locations considering we want to show the phone um, in 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 a location that we feel is identical uh, to its sort of uh, you know personality that each phone has or that highlights the beauty of the phone uh, physically but what happens is when you are stuck in such a situation you have to make use of whatever best uh, setup that you have within your home and uh, that's where i think we have to put into practice all these things that we mentioned so far good lighting good audio uh, and emphasize on these things further in order to get the best possible output so i would really like it if this lockdown situation goes away and we're all safe and i can go out and shoot but at, at the moment i also am not able to do that and i'm just shooting indoors and i'm trying to be creative maybe it'll take some more time because i'm not used to shooting indoors as much as i'm used to shooting outdoors uh, but again like you said practice makes perfect and over the years as uh, a creator you should look back and if you don't think that uh, your video is bad then there's something wrong you should be feeling that each and every video that you made before is bad because that's when you know that you are progressing further you are sort of improving as a creator and you're looking forward to doing better and better next time that's amazing sandeep how can people reach out to you so i'm there on twitter i think i'm most active there sandeep line sharma s a r m a uh but i'm also there uh, on instagram at sandeep sharma and at revetless is there across twitter facebook and instagram so you can reach out to me across all these handles in case you didn't hear that because of sandeep's very very temperamental mic <laughs> today uh it's revetless across all social media and sandeep nine sharma uh on social media for his person handle bharat nagpa dj shrin yes yes so uh, if anybody wants to reach out to me i am on twitter as well as on instagram on uh, the bharat nagpal for both twitter and instagram and then for igan you have all ids for every social media at igan so you can reach out at any of those and uh, we're fairly good with responding back hopefully <laughs> <laughs> well i must give a huge thank you to all of you mega vishwanath from cnbc tv 18 bharat nagpal of igan sandeep sharma of revatless thank you so much you've spent the last one and a half hours uh, and a lot of other time in uh, you know pre prep for this session over the last couple of days thanks so much for taking the time out and sharing some absolutely amazing technical gyan we are really hoping that the creators uh, that are watching this pick up everything that you've said and create amazing content thanks so much for being such a lovely lovely panel today um and to all of you who are watching thanks so much for joining uh, episode 3 of redmi creator academy this is an entire playlist these videos get saved on redmi india youtube channel it's a top playlist right now go and watch all the other sessions as well there's a lot of very relevant gyan that we've shared in all of this and there are two more sessions uh, tomorrow and day after कल जो भी टेक्नो रुहेज के फैंस है डेफिनेटली ट्यून इन क्योंकि टेक्नो रुहेज यहाँ पे आने वाले हैं एंड पब्लिशिंग स्ट्रेटेजी की वो बात करने वाले हैं मोनेटाइजेशन की बात करने वाले हैं आज कुछ सवाल आए थे मेघा ने भी शेयर किया था कि मोनेटाइजेशन पैसे कैसे कमाए जा सकते हैं यूट्यूब के जरिए उसके बारे में लोग जानना चाहते हैं सो प्लीज कल ज्वाइन कीजिएगा ग्यारह बजे and you can ask all those questions and day after uh, there's a session with our in house social media guru sandeep sir uh, he's going to be talking about utilizing social media to bring more traffic and views and engagement to your youtube channel in case you guys haven't already jaake in amazing logon ke youtube channel subscribe abhi kar dijiye dev atlas igyan and cnbc tv 18 um, and keep tab with all the great content that they are making thanks so much all of you uh, panelists and please stay safe please stay indoors take care of yourself and have a great day